Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination. Visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From recipes, motivational posts, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and the reader's favorite regular weekly post, this and that, which goes live on the blog every Friday. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 299th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to live a life with less stress and why it is vital for good health. And that good health is something not only physically, but also that radiates out into the world and ultimately improves the overall quality of your life. Now, today's episode is inspired by a book that I learned about from listening to a podcast from with the author. Ironically, I was listening to Gardener's World podcast, and they had as a guest, Dr. Rangan Chatterjee, and he just had so much enthusiasm for what he was talking about. And he actually has a new book out that um, was shared in a this and that earlier this month. But this particular book, The Stress Solution, came out a couple of years ago, and I just think it's a wonderful resource. So that's the primary source of today's um, topic for today's episode. But before I get to that and break it all down, this week's petite plaisir is a simple nibble, French inspired, that is so easy to make and so satiating and lovely. Brings me back to my childhood in many ways. But uh, anyway, stay tuned and I will share with you that recipe at the end of today's episode. But let's dive right into today's topic, how to live a life with less stress and why it's vital for good health. Let's start with a quote from the book, The Stress Solution from Dr. Rangan Chatterjee. The lack of meaning in our lives stresses us out, but too much stress makes it harder to find meaning. Ooh, what a great conundrum, right? It's, it's about finding that right middle sweet spot. And I love that that is ultimately what drives this entire book. It's about how we find meaning in our lives. Yesterday, for the entire day, and then again today, aside from letting my pups outside from time to time and feeding them, I wallpapered. I turned on old British cozy mysteries, Poirot, with David Suchet, and later Inspector Morris. And went to town, hopefully, transforming my primary bedroom from a gray space to a French-English countryside cottage space. After such focused projects, I sleep deeply. And stress is non-existent. Dr. Chatterjee explains in The Stress Solution how when you found something you love, quote, time and even your sense of self will seem to vanish when you're busy with it. Yep. This is the flow state we've heard so much about over the years. Your emotional brain finds it difficult to grab your attention and your rational brain is being fully encouraged to grow, he further teaches in his book. All of this is to say any negative thoughts cannot grab hold because you are intently engrossed in something your full attention needs to be engaged with. Dr. Chatterjee shares more specifically as psychologist... Mahal, I'm going to mispronounce this. My apologies. I've spelt the entire name on the show notes. Mahali Shazeskamakihali. Again, completely did not say that right. So my apologies. But the original psychiatrist who found or founded this concept of flow state states that flow is only fully reached when we are challenged, which makes it all the more important to find something to give your attention to regularly that you not only love doing, but also steadily gives you opportunity to grow. 
All of this is to say we can alleviate and solve the problem of unnecessary stress in our lives. And when we do so, not only will our overall health improve in the short and long term, but we will deepen the daily contentment we experience and improve our everyday lives. Part of the struggle in America with eradicating stress is whether the culture will admit it or not, and I say it, choosing that non-human pronoun intentionally as we unhelpfully give the culture control over our lives as though we cannot change it because we think it's concrete, unconsciously so, the it, which is our American culture, thrives when we are stressed. Economically, when people need something or feel they need something, remember those false needs we talked about in last episode, 298, they feel inadequate or lacking. And so they do and they buy and they change, which requires something else, which keeps us out of the present moment. Now, this is not to say everyone's doing that, but a large portion of American culture feeds off of us being stressed. Think about advertisements. Why do they advertise? They want you to do something. They want you to buy something. They want you to go to their, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to psychologically tap into what you think you're going to need. But let's go back to that pronoun of it with reference to the American culture. We think we don't have control over it, but we do. Maury Schwartz, the man of insightful wisdom about living and dying well, introduced to readers through Mitch Albom's book, Tuesdays with Maury, expressed and beautifully exemplified the need to cultivate your own culture if the one presented by the world does not work for you. Quote, this is Mitch Albom writing, Maury, true to these words, had developed his own culture long before he got sick. Discussion groups, walks with friends, dancing to his music in the Harvard Square Church, he started a project called Greenhouse where poor people could receive mental health services. He read books to find new ideas for his classes, visited with his colleagues, kept up with old students, wrote letters to distant friends. He took more time eating and looking at nature and wasted no time in front of TV sitcoms. He had created a cocoon of human activities, conversations, interactions, affection, and it filled his life like an overflowing soup bowl. I love this portion of the book. And there's so much about the book I love. I've read this book so many times. But I always keep in the back of my mind this idea that if the culture isn't working for you, then change your culture that you live in. Create your own culture in a way that fills you up and contributes positively to society. Alleviating our lives of stress will take courage, just as it took Maury courage to make these decisions. And while it will require us to be courageous in grand ways, but it's often more just in seemingly small ways as we practice these changes every day until they become a healthy habit of being present. So how can we resolve the stress problem? I want to read you the whole title of the book by Dr. Chatterjee. It's The Stress Solution, The Four Steps to a Calmer, Happier, healthier you. And he shares an acronym LIVE to really drive this entire book. And I just want to share with you what the LIVE stands for, because this is how we resolve the stress problem. This is fundamentally how he makes his argument that it's possible and it can be lasting, but it needs to be centered around these, this acronym of LIVE, L-I-V-E. L stands for do something you love. In other words, find your flow state. We talked about the flow state earlier and engage in it regularly and often. Now, this might be your job, but it might not be. And if it's not your job, then you need to have a hobby or something that you do regularly that allows you to be in a state of flow. And he dives deep into this, but I think it's very clear. We know what we do that we love doing that gets us away from time where we completely get lost in a moment and we're just engrossed and, and we could go on forever and ever and ever. When I speak about my wallpapering, let me just say I'm exhausted, <laughs> but I wasn't going to stop. And I didn't look at the clock until I realized, oh, the dogs need to be fed at three o'clock. Oh, I might want to eat something. I'm kind of hungry, aren't I? <laughs> And it's that feeling where you're excited to see what it's going to do and you love the idea of doing what you're, what you're doing. You don't necessarily have to be doing it. Um, 
if it's your job, you might have to be doing it. But if you are engrossed in it and you love it and your state of flow and it challenges you, then that's what he's talking about. So that's the L. Do something you love. The I is do something with intent. Be present fully in each day and revel in the pleasures of the little details of life, which are everywhere if only we look. Being present enables our sight to improve and thus elevate the quality of our everyday experience. And I'll be sharing an example of this at the end of today's podcast episode. So again, I is do something with intent. V is develop a long-term vision. Chatterjee cites Viktor Frankl, an Austrian psychiatrist whose approach to psychiatry is known by the world of psychiatry as the third school following Freud and Adler. Frankl's theory is that, quote, the primary motivation of an individual is the search for meaning in life and that the primary purpose of psychotherapy should be to help the individual find that meaning, end quote. Frankl, if you know him, had survived Auschwitz, and he found the key difference between survivors and those who lost their lives was the ability to focus on what needed to be done to live because he had a sense of purpose, in other words, a long-term goal. Chatterjee sums that up by saying, quote, when we know the why of our lives, we automatically reduce our stress load. Research indicates that we're able to endure short-term struggles with much more resilience if they're helping us achieve our long-term goals, end quote. So that's V, develop a long-term vision. And the fourth part of this acronym LIVE with regards to getting rid of stress is E, do something that makes you engage with others. And the engagement need not be a large or significant social event or with lots of people. We're not talking about that kind of engagement. What he's talking about is actually giving to others, doing something that is helpful, useful, contributing positively in some way that is meaningful to someone else, someone who may really need what you can give. And so that's going to be obviously individual and dependent upon what and who your circumstances are and where you find yourself. But these are regular things you do on a daily basis. And if we, if we figure out what those four things are, he argues, the decisions get easier and it gets easier to recognize what to say no to and what is not valid, um, you know, worth pursuing in other words. Okay. So of course there are many other choices and habits needed in our daily lives to reduce our stress. And Dr. Chatterjee details them all with helpful specifics to incorporate into our routine. But I have a little bit of a list here (laughs) of some examples inspired from his book. And then, um, I've explained them in my own way. So first, the most important, Find your purpose and meaning. Well, how do you do that? Quote, find periods of calm space to stop and think and then pursue one or more new activities that you are passionate about. People with a strong sense of purpose enjoy significantly better health compared to those who don't, including less likelihood of developing heart disease, strokes, and depression. Research also shows that they sleep better and live longer and live happier lives. So fundamentally, how do you alleviate stress? You find the time to figure out what is most important to you. You find the time to figure out your purpose so that you're not too busy to not figure it out. And therefore, when you do have time, you know what to do with your time. I think this goes back to the original quote that began today's episode. But again, I think for me and I think for a lot of people, not everyone, the pandemic has given us an opportunity to assess what we want to do moving forward, what is really important. And it's revealing to us perhaps false needs. It's revealing to us perhaps false pursuits. And hopefully we can apply that knowledge going forward since we have the opportunity to go forward. All right, so that's the first way to get rid of stress. The second idea to get rid of stress, and arguably I think it goes along with the first, is discover your raison d'etre, meaning your reason for being, raison d'etre. Give yourself the time to come to understand your true purpose, not society's, not your spouse's, not your parents', not your boss's. 
And I would also um, suggest exploring the Simply Luxurious Life second book because I unearth how to discover what your unique journey is and figure out that direction and the courage to go forward on that journey. Um, But discover your reason for being. You have one life. What is it you want to do? What's your legacy going to be? And, you know, that may change as we go and we learn, we discover and we see and we experience new things. But that means you're living presently. It means you're being conscious of your direction and your travels and your journey and your, and your ahas. Figure that out. And it does become easier to say no to other things. I do, I do know that for sure in my own life. Okay. Third thing on this list is get enough sleep each night. And what is enough? And what he states is what you need to leave you refreshed and rested when you wake up. So between seven to nine hours is what he has found is the typical. Prioritize regular exercise. Surprise, surprise. But it's important to remind ourselves of this. And that includes aerobic strength and mental exercise. So yoga and meditation and breathing. That's something he does go into in the book. Also eat a diverse, rich, whole, unprocessed diet of food. And I love his graphic that he has in his book on page 144. It's called Eat the Alphabet. And he emphasizes this, that over a duration of time, say a month's time, um, go through the alphabet and make sure you eat something from every single portion of the alphabet. And he lists different foods in each of these categories. So you can kind of check them off as you go through. And it would definitely be an, you know, an opportunity to explore, um, to try new things um, and have some fun in your kitchen. So eat a diverse, whole, unprocessed diet of food. Eat the alphabet. Okay. Next thing is find time to be intimate with those you love and care about. Put down your phone more often and have 3D connections. He explains that 3D connections involve eyes, touch, and voice. And I will admit, I was talking with someone recently that I think the hardest part about this whole pandemic thing is if, you know, for those people that you're not able to be with in person, it's the eye contact because you can't really have eye contact on Zoom. You're supposed to look at the camera and if you look at the camera, you can't see their eyes and they can see your eyes, but you're not actually connecting. That's the part that um, lacking for me um, as far as to even start that intimate connection is with the eyes. Anyway, I digressed. Moving on. Exercise your gratitude muscle every day. He has a great idea. He um, So we always hear about gratitude journals and writing something down every day that you're grateful for, but he does this in a little different way. He um, He usually does it in the evening, but he also will do it throughout the day at different times of the day, depending on that particular day. And what he does is just, he spends just two to three minutes and he ponders the three Ps, a person, pleasure, and a promise. And what he means by that is for the person, someone who you are grateful for from that current day, uh, with regards to pleasure, something that brought you pleasure, it could be a cup of tea, it could be a beautiful memory you made with someone. And so that could be, I mean, look, think about petite plaisirs. What what brings you joy in the middle of your day? And it's usually something outside of yourself. Remember, pleasure is something outside of yourself that you do not have control over. Um as much as, you know, just your own being. And the third idea he, he writes down is a promise. Think about something that holds promise for a beautiful tomorrow or future. So something that you did or engaged in or invested in or experienced that gave you promise or hope for the future or, you know, a progress towards something that you're hopeful for. And I love that third component. I think that's kind of cool. And the first two, it's a good reminder to kind of really delineate person, experience, and then promise. So just a different idea for being grateful. Um, The next is attentively select the soundtrack of your days. This is the music you play. This is allowing yourself to be in silence from time to time, turning down the noise. And we've talked about this before on the blog and on this, on this show, um, I'm becoming much more I don't, I don't think we should say sensitive to that because I think sometimes that gets a negative connotation. I'm just more aware of the power of what infiltrates our minds when we do not pay attention to the noise. And I mean, that could be anything. It could be advertisements. You know, it could be, you know, just music with lyrics. Sometimes that's just too much for me. I just need to have classical or jazz with no lyrics. <laughs> Let me put the lyrics to the song on my own mind. And sometimes I just don't want to hear any words. Um, but, but being aware of that, I think is key and how it affects your mood. Jazz is you up, slows you down, whatever you need. 
And then the next one is let yourself feel your feelings. Have a good cry if that is what you need. And then follow with deep breaths afterwards to move through whatever needs to be released. And speaking of that, find healthy ways of releasing your stress. When you become self-aware, when you strengthen your emotional intelligence, two things that I talk about in my second book in great detail, and I've talked about them here on the podcast as well, you are going to be more capable of noticing When you are stressed, you'll catch yourself. Often it is simply paying attention to your breath. Um, Are you breathing faster? Are you not breathing deeply? So have ready practices, which will help you to reduce or release what has built up, such as the item we just talked about with regards to letting yourself have a good cry. Could also be giving yourself the opportunity to have an uncontrollable good laugh. Um, You know, turn on your favorite comedy show or comedian and just let yourself roll, you know, (laughs) roll in laughter. That is so amazingly powerful and so simple. So um, the next idea for reducing stress is to create healthy rhythms in your daily life. We talk about routines a lot here on this show and on the blog. Um, They're powerful. If they're healthy routines and habits, they're powerful. Um, You know, fundamentally, sleep. Have a great and healthy sleep routine, Um, eating routine, exercising, connecting, winding down. All of these routines can be lovely things to look forward to. In fact, after this taping of this show, I'm going to unwind, take a bath, have a nice hot cup of tea, watch a favorite show, read a good book get into my dressing gown and my slippers and just relax. Moving on to the next one, limit your time on your smartphone and especially social media sites. Dr. Chatterjee explains how with constant exposure to social media sites, he calls it the Facebook brain, our emotional brains become overreactive. Quote, your brain starts to sense danger even when there's no danger present, end quote. But keep in mind, this is not just for Facebook. Come to understand how social media is designed. It is designed to build uncertainty addiction so that you keep checking your app. And instead, put yourself in the driver's seat. Turn off the notifications. Set phone limits. Remove your phone entirely from social time with others so it's out of sight. Take notes in an actual small notebook rather than putting them in your phone. Try using grayscale on your phone so it makes it less desirable to view. You can do that in your settings. Consume less news and remove those news apps. As well, respect other people's boundaries of weekends and work hours and don't fill their inboxes or their incoming texts except during those hours that are reasonable for the relationship that you have with them. And then when it comes to music, here's a great idea that he suggests, and I actually do this more often um, than... um, not buy yourself a record player or a CD player and step away from the tech. Um, and that way you'll still be able to enjoy your time with music. I, I actually have a record player that has a CD player and it has my radio on it all three in one. And I don't subscribe to any music services. I do listen to Spotify um, and I do have my Amazon Prime uh, music, but I, you know, I don't want to be tethered to my phone all the time. And so when I'm in my house, I usually have a CD playing. So I've been playing Melody Gardot lately, her most recent jazz um, album, as I shared last year as a petite plaisir. Love that CD. I'll turn on the radio um, to listen to different programs that I love at different times of the day. I'll I'll play, I do play my, my classical music apps um, because they have no ads from KUSC. And um, sometimes I'll stream them right through my radio and um, record player. So, you know, it's just kind of, you know, pretty old school, but I kind of like it. Keeps me away from my phone more than I, more than if I would, was not doing it. Okay. Next one, delay gratification. Exercise your self-control muscle. And he explains in detail, the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex area of the brain is where that, that capability is the self-control portion of our brain. And when we do this, when we exercise our self-control muscle, we are improving our impulse decisions. Um, We're not going to be so reactive to temptations. So how do we do that? He suggests engaging in tasks that require effort and practice. So learn a new language. So why not practice more French? 
I shared a list of ideas for how to freshen up your French in last week's post on the blog. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and do that. You can also simply be inspired, not simply, but be inspired by the Queen's Gambit and learn chess. And yes, you can even play a computer game that requires skill and patience. So exercise that muscle. I've always wanted to learn chess. I, I play backgammon. I love backgammon. Um, but definitely that's not, definitely not chess. Um, I need to learn that. So anyway, if anyone has any good websites, um, or good places to learn, please let me know. (laughs) I'm sure I'm not alone based on the sales of chess boards. Um, hard to find. Welcome more nature into your daily routine. Step outside to walk, to gaze at the sky, to feel the sun's warmth on your face and just let yourself feel it. My dogs are my constant distressors and their companionship is priceless and Chatterjee includes pets as part of, you know, welcoming nature into our everyday lives. And I, I could not agree with them more on that component. And last but not least, switch off regularly and without apology. Have time alone. Have time alone. And that's not just switching your phone off. That's being in your own company. Now, that might be easier now with a pandemic, and maybe we have too much of that, some people may say, but um, make the most of it. Let's end with a quote from his book. Your world is defined not by the books you've read, but by your actions. That simple intervention is your first step. Take it. So from this list, there's so much more that he talks about in this book. Whatever is speaking to you, beginning with what is your raison d'etre? What is your purpose? Your reason for being? Start there. And start thinking about what can you let go of? What infiltrates your life that causes stress? And how can you change that? He does a great job of explaining um, ways and strategies to do that. So let me give you an example of, you know, just being present in the moment. It's Sunday morning, 5 a.m. The boys ask for their first outdoor exploration while I prepare their breakfast. Tapping and trotting back into the house, they dine. I turn the stovetop burner on to full heat to boil water. I select a teapot, the tea, and wait while music from a favorite playlist transports my mind to beautiful memories of France. The beloved old copper tea kettle rattles and steam rises from its spout. Pouring the hot water into my teapot, I simply delighted my boys, their presence, their good health at such advanced ages. And I smile, savoring the everydays, finding peace in knowing the direction I have chosen for my life and being grateful for the opportunity to immerse myself in activities I love has given my life the strength to purge the stress which used to weigh it down. Understanding how stress presents itself and whittles its way into our lives is crucial to being able to free ourselves from its pains. I highly recommend the stress solution for clear, easy to understand insight into stress and what our lives truly need to feel good and buoyant and fully human as we live our one and only life. Step one, find your reason to and travel forward from there. Now you can find everything we've talked about, links to his book in the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 299. And I'll be right back with this week's Petit Plaisir. So this week's Petit Plaisir is a brown butter lemon sugar crepe or crepe. <laughs> and I shared a picture of it on my Instagram last Monday, so a week ago today, if you're listening on the first day this episode comes out. And it was how I ended my day. And Monday started off a little awkward, weird, odd, just different. I worked it out. I worked it out. It got better. And it got better when I stepped into my kitchen. (laughs) I made myself a dinner. Um, I made chicken broth. I just... I just love being in the kitchen. And then I was on the phone um, that afternoon with a good friend who we catch up every once in a while pretty regularly. And she loves to cook as well. And so she always seems to inspire or remind me of, oh, that's right. I haven't tried this. Ooh, I've never done that. That's a great idea. And she 
um, suggested or, you know, gave the idea of crepes, crepes. And I was thinking to myself, oh yeah, that would be good. And I can easily do that. And I have the ingredients. And so I made a savory crepe, but then I was looking through my cookbook that I have for crepes. It's, and I highly recommend this. I'll link this cookbook. Um, it has all these different savory and sweet crepes and it's fundamentally very helpful, but also has lovely options and details. And she has, you know, been trained and, and cooked with some of the best chefs, um, in France. She went to La Varenne school there in Paris um, when it was still going. And that's actually where she learned this brown butter lemon crepe technique. So the brown butter, which is very simple to do, but it just adds so much flavor. And I think that's the key. We forget about the simple ways to add flavor. And so I was looking at her book and I saw this simple recipe and I said, oh my gosh, I have lemon. I have butter. Of course I have butter and I have extra batter for the crepe. So I simply made this in about five, 10 minutes and it was just mouthwateringly delicious. And I know this isn't something special or fancy, but it is just fantastic. So all you have to do is find the ingredients. And I actually didn't even have whole milk. I just had half and half and that was just left over. I did not have whole milk, but I used half and half for this recipe. But traditionally you would use two cups of whole milk and then you would add three large eggs and then you would add a little bit of fleur de sol, just a little bit of salt. Then add one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And actually, this is when you add the brown butter that you've melted and cooked on the stove. And you just basically cook it over medium heat. Not basically. You cook it over medium heat, the butter, five to six tablespoons. And I like unsalted butter in the batter, but then I cook with salted butter. And I'll explain why in a minute. But anyway, you cook the butter over medium heat until it turns golden brown. So the water is going to be absorbed. It's going to be evaporated. And then the solids are going to be there. And you're going to see that. And it's going to turn light brown. And then it'll turn to a dark brown. And that's what you want. You want all of it. And pour five to six ounces, um, not ounces, tablespoons, into the batter. Look at all that flavor, right? So then you have that and you can let it sit for five minutes to kind of soak all the flavors into each other or up to a whole day. I mean, I've left, I mean, I always have that leftover batter for the next day. So I just stick it in my fridge and it's fantastic and fine the next day. It's actually even better. And so there's your batter. And then you make a crepe. And I have a video on how to make a crepe. Um, If you turn to episode six of season three, this most recent season of the Simply Luxurious Kitchen, you can watch me um, make a crepe. It's really simple. It was so intimidating to me initially, but it's really so simple. If you get the right batter, the the, the crepe won't break when you flip it. And you have the spatula for crepes and you have the spreader for crepes. You're going to be fine. And just make sure your pan is seasoned. Um, And then, you know, you, you brown it on one side, you flip it. And then you, while it's cooking on the final side, you just rub a little bit of salted butter. Again, I've, I've put salted butter on the crepe pan. I just like that flavor and it's a French butter that I love. Just adds a little more flavor that we don't have to salt the crepe. And then you rub a little bit of the butter on top of the crepe. You sprinkle a little bit of sugar. You can do convectioner sugar, but I use granulated sugar. And then you fold it in half. You do the butter again. You do the sugar again. And that's when you add a little bit of the lemon. So fresh lemon juice. And then you fold it so it's in the quarter form. Um, and you'll see a picture of what I've done. And that's it. So simple, so good. Yeah. That is my petit plaisir. I hope you've enjoyed this week's petit plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Now, I told you I'd recommend the book. The book for crepes is Simply Crepes, 50 Savory and Sweet Recipes by Martha Holmberg. And it's not that big. Um, It's just about 160 pages, but I love it. It's just a great resource for really good crepes. Have that in your kitchen. Go to. All right. So visit the show notes for that recipe, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 299. And I'll be back on the first Monday of February in two weeks with a fantastic guest, Susan Herman Loomis, to talk about her new cookbook, Plat du Jour, which, by the way, I previewed it this week. It's fantastic. So um, anyway, she's going to be on the show. She's always a good good guest to have on. I love her enthusiasm. She's been on previous, um, previous times with other books. And that's on February 1st. Susan Herman Loomis, episode 300. Wow. I'm at 300. Have a beautiful week. And thank you very much for tuning in. Bonjour.
Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up my latest book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self, now available on Audible and wherever audiobooks are sold, as well as in paperback and ebook versions. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman guide, which is also available in paperback, ebook, and as an audiobook as well. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog post, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's free weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or cup of morning coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.